Okay, welcome to another video. We're going to take a look at six past multiple choice questions covering the economics of monopoly power. Here's our first question. Which one of the following combinations, A, B, C or D, is most likely to increase a firm's monopoly power? Take a look through the options here. They all refer to barriers to entry and the depth of product differentiation and choose the option which might increase the firm's monopoly power. So barriers to entry, of course, uh, are the, the costs of making a profitable entry to the market. The risks for potential entrants are higher when the, when the barriers to entry are pretty stiff to climb over. So we're looking for where the barriers to entry have gone up. So it must be B or D. Product differentiation, of course, is the difference between products in terms of design, functionality, quality of ingredients, etc. And typically when product differentiation is strong, this allows firms uh, to increase the degree of consumer loyalty, the brand value, the brand loyalty of a product goes up, and again, that makes it harder for new firms to come in. So we're looking there for barriers to entry increasing and product differentiation to increase as well. Question two is a diagram question, and it refers to uh, maximum prices, price capping in a monopoly. In the diagram on the right hand side there, MC and ACI profit maximizing monopolist marginal and average cost curves. MR and AR are the initial marginal and average revenue curves. Now, which output will the firm produce if the government sets a maximum price of OP? So press the pause button if you need to. Take a moment or two to have a think and a go at this question. So we know the price is going to be P. Uh, the question is what output will a profit maximizing out a monopolist um, choose? Of course, now they're capped. They can't choose the unfettered, unregulated price, which would be where marginal cost meets marginal revenue, which is output J. If you cap the price at OP, that price effectively now becomes the firm's marginal revenue curve because they can't charge above it. But effectively, they can charge every unit they sell will be charged at price P. Now, if that becomes the marginal revenue curve, it intersects with um, marginal cost at output K. So the answer is OK, and it's correct. Uh, that, at that price, by the way, they're making a profit because price is above average cost. At output um, L, for example, they're breaking even, and at output M, they're making a loss. So the answer to question two is B. Here we go with question three. All other things being equal in a monopoly. And then you're looking for the correct statement. So read through the options, please. A, B, C and D. Have a go at question three. So in this situation, we're looking for a correct statement. Ketris Parabus, all other things being equal in a monopoly. The answer there is D. High prices can lead to market failure. Uh, market power does not always lead to an efficient allocation of resources. Indeed, monopoly power can lead to the price being lifted well above marginal cost, leading to a loss of allocative efficiency. Product differentiation leads to higher barriers to entry, and economies of scale lead to a downward sloping low and average cost curve, not the demand curve. So the answer is D. High prices can lead to market failure in particular because consumers pay more than they would pay if the market was more competitive. Another diagram question for you. These are common in assessments. The diagram shows the cost and revenue curves for a firm with monopoly power. Which of the following statements, and there are four of them obviously, is correct? Press the pause button, have a think and have a read through which of the following statements is correct. So what did you get for question four? Let's work through. At output T, the firm is revenue maximizing. No, that would be output Z. That's where marginal revenue is zero. At output V, the firm is allocatively efficient. And the answer to that is correct, because that's where price, which is OU, equals the marginal cost of supply. Just to double check, at output Z, the firm is productively efficient. No, they've moved beyond the minimum point of their average cost curve. And at uh, profit maximizing output, the supernormal profits are KLMN. Well, profit maximizing output is output T, and the profits are equal to the area FG 
uh, well, actually, not really shown there, <laughs> uh, but it's not KLMN. So the correct answer is B. Two questions to go. At major sporting events, unofficial markets occur when tickets originally sold by the event organiser are resold at prices higher than the original ticket price. What might be the conclusion of an economist considering these markets? So have a look at the answers there, A, B, C and D. What do you think the right answer is to question five? So this is out of resale markets, things like touting and things where um, perhaps they've originally sold the, pro the tickets at too cheap a price and they, there was a pent up demand for, for tickets, big cup finals and things, big sporting events. The right answer here is C. Uh, once you resell, you're going to bring into the market those people for whom there is a genuine uh, willingness to pay, people with a high marginal or private benefit. So the new allocation of tickets better reflects that. Uh, B is wrong. Often the market for resale tickets is less equitable because tickets only go to those people with the incomes, with the resources uh, to pay for them. And our final question in this little set of six multiple choice questions on monopoly which measure to reduce the abuse of monopoly power is an example of regulation is it the legislation to for forbid price fixing by cartels is it the removal of import tariffs is it the subsidizing of smaller firms in the market is it the taxation of monopoly profits have a go please at question six well, the correct answer here is A. So laws governing anti-competitive behaviour, including price fixing by a cartel, collusion, is regulation. Trade policy is B, and fiscal policy obviously is, is C and D, both examples of how you could use fiscal policy to control or to bring correct for or reduce the potential loss of welfare due to a monopoly power. There we go. There were, that was my selection of six past multiple choice questions on Monopoly. And again, huge thanks. I never take this for granted. Huge thanks for those people who've worked all the way through. Take care. See you soon.